Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel in another tutorial. Today I am happy to uh, sew along with you uh, my take on the Trailblazer convertible pack by Begstock Designs. Um, I have modified it in some ways. Um, I will show you what I have done. I do have another tutorial on this. It was actually the second tutorial I ever did two years ago. It's four hours long. I've renamed it as more of a sew along type thing. So if you want a slowed down version on how to make this bag, I will try to remember to link that down below in the description if you want to see that old video and go back in time with me there. This one here is a modified version of the Trailblazer pack pack. And what I say modified is because I make it so these handles will drop down. So we've added in some connectors. And another thing that I have changed is you only have one strap to worry about rather than the crossbody and then the do uh, back pack straps like um, the pattern calls for. So what I did was I cut a crossbody strap to 64 inches. The extra length makes it so it works as one piece for the backpack straps. I added in an O-ring here. So what happens is when you have your crossbody strap to the longest length it can be. You hook it into the one corner, you loop it through this O-ring. The O-ring allows for the swivel clasp to fit through it. And then you clip it down on the other side D-ring and it makes an amazing backpack. I'll show you. I'll put it on my back and I will show you. So this is actually rather large on me right now for the strap so you can definitely adjust it. And then, of course, it is also a crossbody strap. You just have to adjust it to whatever length that you prefer for that. Okay, let me show you some of the amazing features of the bag and that do come with the pattern. So you have a zipper pocket here in the flap, perfect for a cell phone or what have you. Underneath here is a magnetic snap closure and a large slip pocket on the back. You have, I actually, this one's for a client and I made this into a luggage sleeve. You could also sew this shut here and make it another slip pocket. Another decent sized zipper pocket on this side. It's got your two side pockets and of course where you connect your crossbody strap. It's got a top zipper closure. Now the inside of this, I did not do the linings um, of how I did these linings in the tutorial. I do have classes on how I did them, of course, which will be linked in the description. This one is a client bag. She wanted me to add in a laptop sleeve, which I have done here. And then on the other side, I have my typical decorative zipper pocket and two slip pockets. So again, this is one of the bags I have been making from the beginning, even when I before I had my industrial and everything. It's completely domestic machine friendly, of course, based on what you choose for uh, for your fabrics or what have you. Um, materials I use in this bag. So this brown um, vinyl is the Coyote variegated vinyl from Galaxy Customs. This fabric, the lining in that, this is from Spoonflower. I did this in a canvas, so I did not have to back any of these pieces with SF101 or EB Fuse Lite or any woven interfacing, which really helps speed things up. If you were using cotton pieces on here, you would definitely make sure that you were backing them with a medium woven interfacing. My main stabilizer in this is the Pretty in Pink Sew Foam from Galaxy Customs. Um, it's equivalent to say Pelham Flex Foam or Biani Soft and Stable or Bossel uh, Sew In Foam. All of that works. All of my hardware is from Emmeline Bags. My zipper and zipper pulls is from Blue Cala. I do have a piece of Decaville Heavy in the bottom for a heavy stabilizer for support of the bottom of the bag. Thank you so much, Namrata, for letting, allowing uh, YouTubers to do tutorials on your amazing patterns. Um, what else, what else? I think that's it. So really, the only thing I modified in this pattern was the crossbody strap and adding in that o-ring and you can save on your uh, fabric because you only have to cut the one crossbody strap. I did piece this crossbody strap. You can see, can you see my join there? Right there? Because I mean my, it only came in a 54 inch width, but I pieced it and that worked out just fine. Um, so yes, so change that O-ring. I change these to a flop down. You end up saving, you add in your four uh, rectangular rings and your O-ring, but you're also gonna be admitting two 
crossbody straps of hardware, which is awesome. And one D ring, because you're replacing it with the O ring. So yeah, anyways, how about we get to making this bag? So you're gonna need some number five zipper tape, a one and a quarter to one and a half inch O-ring, two swivel clasps, slider, four D-rings, six purse feet, four rectangular rings, four zipper pulls, two magnetic snaps, optional six zipper or strap ends, a zipper end, and your nameplate. Okay, so I cut my crossbody strap to 64 inches because I'm also going to use this for my backpack strap. To do this my way, you're going to need nine connector pieces. Your two handle pieces. your two exterior lower bottom main pieces, your bottom piece of both lining exterior as well as your heavy stabilizer, your back slip pocket pieces, lining and exterior, your front slip pocket pieces, lining and exterior, your lining slip pocket piece, your back lining zipper pocket piece, your front pocket lining zipper pocket piece, two exterior sides, two exterior linings, your flap exterior, I'm doing mine both in faux leather as I'm gonna do it raw edge, exterior middle sections, front and back, your two top panels, side pieces, side pocket pieces, two exterior, two lining, and your two interior zipper pocket lining pieces, and your two side lining panels, as well as foam for your main st stabilizer, and rivets. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my crossbody strap and handles off camera. If you need a class for that, I have my playlist down below for you. All right, so I am doing my flap a little bit different than in the pattern. I wanna do a raw edge. So I'm using two of my exterior faux leather pieces. On the one that will be my lining piece, I am using my pattern piece to mark where my magnetic snap placement will be from the male side of my magnetic snaps. And I'm gonna go ahead and install those in those two places. Now I went ahead and I backed them with some Decaval Heavy and I like to put a little bit of Gorilla Tape over top of the prongs. Okay, so now we're going to take that front flap pocket lining piece and we are going to measure in three quarters of an inch from each side. And then in between those lines, we're going to make a box that is seven eighths of an inch from the top. So this should measure seven and a half inches along this bottom line in between those marks. Okay, now we're gonna take the exterior flap piece. You wanna find the center of the long straight edge of this, as well as the center of that uh, lining pocket piece. Now with our exterior piece right side up and our lining piece uh, wrong side down, so these are the right sides together, we're gonna line up our centers and clip this in place. And then we're gonna go ahead and sew along those lines that we had just drawn. Next, what we're going to do is from the short side of our stitching here, we're going to measure in half inch. And then from the corner of our stitching to that half inch line, we're going to draw a diagonal line. Next, we're going to cut into that diagonal line as close as we can to the stitching without cutting our stitching. And then we're going to flip these two pieces wrong sides together. 
So you kind of want to fold the seams and either finger press them or if you're using all cotton, um, you can definitely go ahead and um, give this a good press. Um, again, I am using vinyl because I am going to do a raw edge way here. Okay, so now once we have that, I'm going to take some double-sided tape. If you're on a domestic machine, just keep this slightly over an eighth of an inch away from where we will be top stitching along the zipper. We want to make sure our zipper pull is closing to the left. And then we're going to zipper, uh, zipper. We are going to center this on our zipper tape like so. So those two kind of one inch sides or three quarter inch uh, sides that are taller, we're going to line those up first with the top of our zipper tape, match up those edges. And then we're going to stick down where we have placed our tape and place it along our zipper tape nice and even so we have a nice straight zipper like so. And then we're going to go along here, across here and up here with a top stitch to hold that zipper in place. Okay, once that's done, we're going to flip this over like so, and we are going to fold up that lining piece. So our lining piece is now folded in half, right sides together, lining the unsewn edge up with the unsewn side of our zipper tape. Clip it in place. And then we are going to go ahead and base this on with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now we want to close up the sides. So we're going to fold over our exterior piece so we don't sew through it and we are just going to sew up the sides. Um, you kind of want to go as close as you can to where the seam of the zipper tape was. So I think that was probably about uh, three quarters of an inch or so in or five eighths of an inch ish. And that closes up that zipper pocket for us. Next, what we want to do is we want to trim down those seam allowances so they will not be caught in our seams when we go to sew the lining side on. So we have a functioning zipper pocket here. Yay! Okay, now we're going to take our lining piece that has the uh, magnetic snaps on it. Um, again, I am doing a raw edge. You can also do a turned flap if you want to use cottons. Um, just follow the instructions in the pattern. So I'm going to use some double-sided tape outside of the seam allowances to stick these two front and main pieces wrong sides together. As even as it can be, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then we're going to baste across the top and then top stitch around the short of uh, the curvy edges with a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So right here we are starting with a three eighths of an inch top stitch. Make sure your bobbin thread is nice as well because it will be seen on both sides here. Make sure you're getting a nice shape because this is a, a huge vocal point of the bag and then just an eighth of an inch top stitch along the zipper tape. Okay so next what we're going to do is we are going to trim where we top stitched down to about an eighth of an inch away from our stitching line like so. You want this to be nice and even. This is allowing us to have a nice smooth and even edge for when we go to edge coat this. I just love the look of this flap with the raw edge and the 
edge coat with the protecting gloss on it. I think it just looks so classy. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a three layers of base coat, a color, and protecting glass. Gloss, if you need an edge paint class, I do have that down below in the Bag Makers uh, Basics 101 playlist down below. Okay, so now we're gonna take our connectors where we're waiting for that to dry. You're gonna take uh, some double-sided tape or clips, whatever your preference is. I've already gone ahead and drawn a center line, which is a one inch line down the center of all nine of our connectors. We're gonna fold the long edges into that center line. And you're gonna do that with all nine connector pieces. Okay, now take two of those connector pieces and set them aside. We are gonna take the other six and we are going to top stitch an eighth of an inch seam allowance down each of those folded edges of those, sorry, seven connectors. So two connectors we have set aside. We will not be doing any top stitching on them just yet. And then these other seven we are gonna do down each side. You can see here I am chain stitching. I do not have a cut function on my industrial machine. So I find this is just a time saver from cutting thread and also saves on thread. Okay, now we are going to work on our side pocket pieces. So what you wanna do is you take your lining piece and your exterior piece. Now the longest um, side of this is our top. You're going to put these right sides together and clip them in place along the top and sew across here with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm once again going to chain stitch these just to speed things up a little bit. Next, what we want to do is flip these wrong sides together. Make sure you finger press the seam really good. Roll it between your fingers. And then what we're going to do is we are going to top stitch that uh, stitched edge there and then baste the other three edges on both of our side pocket pieces. Once again, I am going to chain stitch. Okay, now we want to take our exterior side panels and we want to line up the bottoms of both the side pocket and the bottom and you're going to clip these in place and then you're also going to go ahead and just baste along that bottom with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now we're going to form our pocket. So the first side is really easy. You're just going to kind of match up the raw edges of the side of the pocket piece and the side panel. Now 
We are going to do the same with the other side, but you'll notice that our side pocket piece is bigger and that is to make it into a pocket that we could put, say, a water bottle or what have you into it. So you're going to just match up the raw edges like this and you're going to notice that it billows in the center. That is exactly what we want. Just make sure your raw edges match up perfectly here. Once you have that in place, you can go ahead and just space that in place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now those are done. Now it's time to do our purse feet. You're going to use your pattern piece for this. So I've already gone ahead and put in my, I refused my Decaville Heavy that I have on the bottom here outside of the seam allowances. I'm going to find the centers of my, all four edges of my bottom piece. That's going to help us when we go to attach this to the main body pieces later. Now we're going to take our main body pieces. I've already punched holes where the markings are for our purse feet and I'm just going to transfer them over. If you need a class on how to install purse feet, I do have that in my Bag Makers Play Basics 101 playlist, which is linked down below. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done that and I would just like to put some Gorilla Tape or duct tape over top of the prongs just for a little extra stability. Okay, so now we are going to work on five of our connector pieces here, our four rectangular rings and our O-ring. So these are ones that we have top stitched. I'm going to use a little bit of double-sided tape outside of our top stitching seam allowances here. And I am going to put the rings in and then fold them over the rings, wrong sides together, like so. Now we're going to take all of these with our top panels. Our top panels, we want to find our centers along the tops. I've put a small piece of tape on the bottoms uh, wrong sides of all of those five connectors. You can use clips as well. So from that center line we want to measure over two inches from that center line to the left and the right. And then we're going to take our rectangular rings and you're either going to clip or tape them down to either the left or the right, depending which side you are doing, of that two inch line. You'll do the same for both. Okay, so that's them done. I'm just gonna double check that they're even, and they are. And the panel that is going to be on the back, we're gonna do the same, but we're gonna put the O-ring there for our backpack, except for I'm gonna have this kind of overlapping by about a half inch or so down here, just because I wanna give this little extra stability, as this is gonna be where our backpack strap loops through. Go ahead and baste all five of these in place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now that's done. You can put those aside. Now we are going to work on our front slip pocket. You're going to take your exterior piece and your lining piece. I'm using the same fabric for both here. Along the top, clip them together and then go ahead and sew across that top with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Next, you want to put these wrong sides together and give it a really good press, making sure that seam is good. Okay, so that is done and we can go ahead and we can top stitch along that sewn edge, which I have done. Now we are going to work on putting this all together. So I have my exterior front bottom piece here. I'm just gonna make sure it's orientated right. Find my top and bottom centers. I always use the pattern piece to make sure my orientation is right because it's so easy to flip this around and have it uh, going the wrong way. And we're going to take our flat piece, which you see I have nicely edge coated. We're going to find the center and just mark it within the seam allowance like so on that zipper. Match up that zipper center and the exterior bottom piece center like so, both right side up. 
Make sure it is definitely center. I always measure twice. Go ahead and baste this in place. Okay, once that's done, I'm gonna take my slip pocket piece here with the top stitch side going up. And I'm going to just, this is how I like to figure out where my magnetic snap for my female snaps are going to go because you want them to line up perfect. And sometimes, depending on how you printed your pattern, that isn't always necessarily the case. So this is how I do it. So I'm just clipping this in place where it is going to be. And then, again, making sure it's centered. And then I'm going to just take my Soline Air Erase pen and I'm going to just, on the nubby parts of the male snaps like this, I'm going to saturate them with the ink let them fall and then press them down on my fabric and that transfers the dots over and that will guarantee that that is the perfect placement for your female snaps to fit. Make sure you flip the lining side of this pocket out before you install those snaps. You only want to be doing it through the exterior of that pocket piece. Once they're in, go ahead, snap them in place and then you can go ahead and you can baste those three rod edges together with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And that is your front slip pocket and your flat piece done. Okay, now we're gonna take our exterior middle piece. You can use clips. I'm going to use double-sided tape because you know double-sided tape is my best friend, and but I am on an industrial. I'm gonna use uh, the double-sided tape right along the bottom of my exterior middle piece and then I'm going to put this right sides together with the unsewn side of that zipper I'm going to find I actually almost forget I always do find your top and bottom centers of course and then go ahead and stick this right sides together along that unsewn side of the zipper tape and then we are going to sew this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance now I'm going to go ahead and take the time to switch into my zipper foot. You know I'm a big advocate to switching into your zipper foot whenever you are using a zipper. It just helps get a nice even straight zipper and it really truly only takes 30 seconds or so. Okay so we're going to go ahead and sew this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance with my right zipper foot. Okay, and now we're going to push this up so we have the seam pointing towards the top of the bag and we are going to top stitch it right through the middle exterior middle piece here to hold that seam in place. So once again, that seam is pointing towards the top. Okay, so that's done, yay. Now we are gonna take the exterior top panel that has the two rectangular rings, not the one with the center O-ring. This is the front of the bag. We have the centers marked already. We're going to put these right sides together, matching up that center and clipping across. Okay, and we're going to sew that with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. At this point, I am going to switch back to my standard uh, presser foot. I like to do a little bit of a back stitch at the stop and start of my connectors just to give them a little extra security. You don't have to do that, I just like to. And then we are going to be pushing this so the seam is pointing towards that middle exterior middle piece. Um, and this is to um, make it so our connectors will stay flipped up and top stitch through that exterior middle piece over top of the bottoms of those connectors as well. And that'll hold our connectors in the direction they need to go. Okay, so that is done and we are just gonna set this aside for now. 
Okay, so now we are going to work on our exterior zipper pocket on the back of our bag. So I have my zipper pocket lining piece here. I have found my top center and I'm going to measure down two inches and draw a line. And this is where we wanna draw a nine inch square for our zipper. Now I have 3D printed this nine inch zipper which is awesome for drawing this in like so. I'm just making sure it looks pretty centered. I will double check that it is centered and this is a nine inch line. And we want to draw a half inch line in from the short sides and then in between those short lines, a quarter of an inch line and then do your V's out. Next, we're going to grab the exterior piece of our exterior zipper pocket piece. So this is also going to be our luggage sleeve. Find your top and bottom centers. And then we're going to have the exterior piece right side up. And we're going to take that zipper pocket lining piece, match up that center along the top. And this way we know that our placement of the zipper is correct. I'm also going to take a couple pins and I'm just going to put them in between our rectangle like so. Just to secure that a little more. And then we're going to go ahead and sew around that external rectangle that we first drew. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut that center line in between those half inch lines. I like to go in with my rotary cutter and then get closer with my scissors. Cut into the V's as close as you can to the stitching without cutting the stitching. And then go ahead and push the lining piece through that opening we have just made to bring the main exterior panel of our luggage sleeve and the zipper pocket lining piece wrong sides together. Go ahead and take this to the iron and give it a good press. Okay, so that's what this looks like. I'm going to use some double-sided tape. Again, make sure it is more than an eighth of an inch away from where we will be top stitching the zipper in place, especially if you are on a domestic machine and then you won't be sewing through it. So I've put some tape on the top and the bottom. I have my zipper pull closing to the left I'm going to take the tape off of the top part of our zipper opening and I'm going to center it over top of the zipper tape making sure my placement is the way I want it to be to make a nice straight zipper. Once you like that go ahead and take the bottom piece of the zipper or the double sided tape off and do the same with the bottom part of the zipper. And then we're going to top stitch this in place all the way around with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull my threads long because I don't want to have a back stitch um, area of uh, buildup of thread. So I have my threads pulled long to get started. I'm going to start working my way around. Right now I'm going to pull that starting bobbin thread, pull, tug on a little bit to pull the top thread through. Again, you can back stitch if you like. This is just my preference. As we start coming back to where we had started stitching, we're going to make sure that our needle lands in that very first hole that the first stitch made. Hold on to your thread so you know which one is your bobbin thread. Pull your threads long. Give a yank on that bobbin thread to pull that ending top thread through. And then go ahead and tie those four threads off in three or four knots. And then you'll have a nice continuous line around your zipper. Okay, so that's done. Next, what we wanna do is take this lining piece just like we did with the flap, fold it in half so it's right sides together. And we're going to clip the top together as well as the open sides. 
And very similar to what we did with the flap, we are gonna to wanna to sew this kind of folding the exterior piece out of the way so we don't sew through it. So we're gonna start at the bottom here with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, and then along this top, we're gonna to do a one inch seam allowance, and then down the other side with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now the reason the top we're doing the one inch seam allowance is because we're going to cut away much of that material. So across here with a one inch, and then down the other side with a three eighths of an inch, making sure you do not get your exterior piece caught in the stitching. It's just the pocket lining piece we are doing. Okay, you can go ahead and trim up those seam allowances to about a quarter of an inch or so away from the stitching. It doesn't have to be perfect here. We just want it to be outside of the seam allowances where we'll be sewing this to the main panel of the bag. Again, make sure you do not cut your exterior piece, just your lining pieces. Okay, and we have a completely functioning zipper pocket. Okay, so now we're going to take the lining side of our luggage sleeve. Again, this can be a luggage sleeve or a slip pocket. My client wants this to be a luggage sleeve, so that's what I'm showing here. You're gonna go ahead and you are going to clip together the top and the bottoms, not the sides. Right sides together. And then we're going to sew across the top and the bottom with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So that's done. So we have a tube here. Go ahead and turn your tube right side out. Once you have that done, if you can, go ahead and press this with an iron or finger press it if you're using vinyl. Then we're going to top stitch along the top and bottom folded edges. So I have it nicely pressed already here and I'm just going to go ahead and go and do that top stitching. Now, if this is going to be a slip pocket for you, do not top stitch the bottom part of this yet. If you're doing a luggage sleeve like me, go ahead and top stitch the bottom part. Okay, so now what we want to do is take our back bottom exterior piece, find your top and bottom centers, make sure you have this piece orientated correctly so you're working with the right width. We're going to put our one inch ruler along the top. Now, and that is where the placement of this pocket is going to go one inch down from the top. So once you have it placed nicely, go ahead and clip the sides in place. Once this is in place, if you're doing the luggage sleeve like me, this is where you would just go ahead and base the two side pieces here. If you are making this into a slip pocket, you would do the sides as well as you would um, top stitch along the bottom part here to make a slip pocket. Okay, so now we're going to do this exterior exactly like we did the front, except for we're going to use the top panel that has the O-ring. As you can see, that is all done. Now you're going to take the two side pieces, the two main pieces and the bottom and back them with foam. You're going to see here I have cut the foam on my sides out of the top two corners and about three quarters of an inch outside of the top of this. This is to really help when we go to put the zipper on so our we don't have too much bulk in those seams. Okay, so now we're going to take our two D-rings. These are the other two that have our top stitching on it and you're going to do exactly like we did with the rectangular rings. Put the D-ring in, fold them in half and either tape them together like I have or use a clip. Now we want to make, these are for our back bottom backpack connectors, strap connectors. So on one on the left side you're going to measure up a half inch, make a mark. The other one on the right side, half inch, make a mark. And then from the opposite bottom corner from those marks, you're going to draw up a diagonal line. You're going to go ahead and you are going to cut away that diagonal line. 
Now we're going to grab our back panel here. That's the one that has the three connectors on top. We're going to measure up one inch from the bottom corners, and this is going to be the placement of our bottom backpack connector strips. Now that diagonal edge is going to go on like this, so our D-ring is kind of pointing up towards the center of our panel. Clip that in place. Go ahead and do the other one the same way, and then baste those in place. Okay, so now we are going to take the two connectors that we did not top stitch and we are going to do our crossbody connectors. So about a third of the way up, you want to use some double sided tape, put on your D-ring, fold it down about halfway like so, and then bring up the bottom raw edge to meet the other halfway like so. On the right side, or on the wrong side, I'm also going to put another piece of double sided tape outside of the seam allowances. And on the right side, I am going to measure down from the folded side a three quarter of an inch line just to give myself a stitching guide. Now, on our side panel piece, you want to find the top center. And we want to measure down one and a half inches centered from that top center. I just like to use my one inch ruler here and I put it at the half inch mark because this is a one inch connector. And then I just line it up one and a half inches down and we're going to go ahead and top stitch around that going across the line that we drew. Again, I'm pulling my threads long like I did before because I do not want to have a build up a back stitching uh, thread. So they're pulled long. I'm going along the bottom, up the side, across. Well, I'm going to pull that uh, top thread through right now from the starting thread across that three quarter of an inch line we drew back down the other side. And then once again, make sure our needle ends in our starting stitch, pull the threads long, pull the top thread through, and tie off our four strands. You'll do the same with the other side. Okay, so I also went ahead and I put in my uh, rivets backed with Decaval Heavy on all of my connector pieces as well as put in my nameplate in between my front connector pieces. Okay, so on our exterior side pieces, we want to along the bottom draw a 3 eighths of an inch line up from the bottom, like so. I'm going to take one of our main panels, put these right sides together, clip them in place, And we're going to sew from the top with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and we are going to stop at that line and do a back stitch. You do not want to sew past that line. You'll do the same with the other side as well. So I've gone ahead and I've connected both sides so I can go ahead and sew them at the same time. But once again, when you get to that bottom line we draw, drew, do not go past it. Okay, so that is done. I went ahead and connected the other side in the exact same manner. Now we're going to pull out our bottom piece and we are going to make three eighths of an inch high and wide squares on all four corners. So our main panel is now a tube with our two sides and our two exterior front and back pieces connected. Now it's time to connect the bottom. So you want to match up our bottom centers. So make sure you're actually attaching this to the bottom of the bag, not the top. Kind of work from the inside with these right sides together. Start with matching up that bottom center and then clip the bottom in place along one of the straight sides.
Okay, and we're going to sew from one box to the other box without going past those lines with the 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. This is creating, again, I always forget what these are called. I think they are called Y seams. So this is going to give us like really perfect corners in there. So again, start at one box. So all the way across the other box without going past those boxes. Okay, and you want to make sure that our lines match up on the sides here. So where our bottom seam was and our side seams that they connect. Go ahead and do the same with the other long side of the bottom from box to box. Just squish the bag under your pressure foot and all will be well. Okay, next we need to do our sides. So they should match in pretty good here. You'll kind of see how we kind of get these uh, three corners that don't connect and that is exactly what we want. On the sides, we're gonna sew across that 3 8 of an inch line, but we're not gonna go past the stitching that we have on the sides here. So you're just gonna go in between that. So I like to put my needle down where I see the stitching from when we attach the side. Put my needle down there and then go all the way across and stop at the opposite sides stitching. Okay, now that's done. Now we want to reduce some of the bulk in these bottom corners. So you kind of just from the sides, I find, if you do it from the sides and squish them down like so, nice and flat, trim them off on an angle without cutting into any of that stitching. So we're going through all of the layers here. Make sure you don't cut your stitching or you'll have a hole. You can also go ahead and trim these seam allowances out to a quarter of an inch if you like. I don't think it's needed, so I didn't do that. Go ahead, turn your bag right side out. Make sure you poke out those corners really good and press out all your seams really good. Okay, you can see how nice and perfect our corners look. And that is the exterior done. We can set that aside for now. Now the lining pieces, we do the same way. Now I've already gone ahead and done my lining decorative pockets because I do them different than the pattern. If you need classes on that, down below in my Bag Makers 101 playlist below. Now our lining goes together the same way, except for the bottom of our side pieces, we're gonna measure three quarters of an inch. We are making our lining pieces a little bit small, our bigger seam allowance because we want it to be snug inside the bag so it does not kind of fall in upon itself. So three quarters of an inch along the bottoms of the sides and then three quarter of an inch boxes on our bottom pieces. Now when we attach this to our main panels, for about the first three inches or so, we're gonna start at three eighths of an inch and then work our way down to three quarters of an inch, making that seam allowance bigger, not going past the line, doing it exactly like we did with our exterior pieces when we made that tube. Now the bottom, same thing, but we are going to leave an opening turning hole in one of the sides. So, so in about an inch or so, in between those three quarters of an inch boxes on one side and do the rest just like we did before. So here we go, we have an opening in our zipper pocket, an opening in the bottom of the bag. Now we're gonna prep our top zipper. You're gonna notice I don't have my zipper end on or my zipper pull on, and that is okay. On the wrong side of our zipper tape on one side, we're going to measure up a line with one inch and mark it with a pen that won't erase. On the opposite side, right side up, we are going to kind of turn it in at a 90 degree angle like so and secure it with the pin. Do the same with the other side, making them as even as possible, secure with the pin and then baste those curves in place and that has created a stop for us. Once you have that, pull your tape apart. We're gonna take our exterior piece and from these where our sides are joined on both the front and the back, I'm just gonna make sure I'm nice and centered, which I am. We are going to make a mark two inches from that seam into the side panel. Make a mark. 
Do the same on all from all four seams. So two inches here, and same with the other side, front and back. I'm also going to go in because I know my pen marks are going to rub away and I'm just going to do small snips about an uh, eighth of an inch or so uh, where those marks are just because those snips don't go away and I'll be able to see them when I'm placing my zipper. So I'm just doing very, very, very teeny tiny snips where those lines were. Okay, now I have my bag with the front facing up. I'm going to take my zipper tape. I want to make it so the curvy part is going to the left and we want to place this right sides together. So my zipper is right side down with the curvy side to the left and we are going to clip this in place. Now these side seams here, you want to fan them open. We want to reduce as much bulk as we can. This is why I chose to trim away um, the foam out of those corners and out of the top seam allowance where the zipper will go. I had issues before with the foam where my zipper would get caught up on those side seams and this is what I found rectified that problem. So when we get to the opposite side where our tail is, when we get to that last snip, what we are going to want to do is veer that tail down so it doesn't get caught in the seam allowance because we will be putting a zipper end on that. So I'm going to put one clip here where that mark is and then I'm veering it down like so. And then I'm just going to actually stick it into my D-ring like this to hold it in place so it stays veered down. I found this is a handy tool. It's kind of nice that the D-rings are there and clip that in place. Now we're going to do the same with the other side but the curvy part is going to be right sides together with it to the right because we are on the back of the bag now and do the same clipping it in place all the way across and veering that zipper tail down and out of the way. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and base this in place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now I am taking this to my cylinder arm machine because it just is easier. It, this is just as easy to do on a flatbed of course, but I have the cylinder arm so I may as well use it. I am switching into my zipper foot because you know how I feel about zippers, especially for a zipper top closure. We definitely want to put on our zipper foot because this zipper, if we don't get our stitching nice and close to that zipper and nice and even, we are going to have a zipper that is going to be like the ocean and nice and wavy. And we want to try to get this as straight as possible. This top zipper is the hardest part of this bag because you have to be very careful that your stitching is very even or you will have a wave in your zipper. So go ahead and baste this on all the way around with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now that that is done, I'm going to take my lining, I'm going to situate it the direction I want the lining to be, and I'm going to take my exterior and stuff it inside the lining. Make sure your tails of your zipper are stuffed inside the bag. You do not want them to get caught in our stitching here. On the front and back mains, you want to match up the lining and the exterior centers. That's why I have the snips there because they're nice and easy to see. Then we're going to do the same on our side centers. Now I just realized I forgot to mark my side seam centers here so I'm just going to go ahead match up my seams and snip my centers and then match it up to that center. 
Then we're also going to match up these side seams, make sure we have them butterflied open and clip them in place. That again helps reduce the bulk in these side seams because if your zipper is going to get stuck at all, it's going to be right where those seams meet. Trust me, ask me how I know. Once you have that all done, we're going to go ahead and we are going to sew this on with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now the pattern does say a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I myself struggle with the 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance because I find that my zipper gets stuck on those side seams we were talking about. So I rectified that by making the seam allowance a little bit smaller to give a little bit more room between uh, the teeth and those side seams and I have no issues since doing that. So go ahead and sew all the way around here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. If I were on my domestic machine, I would be sewing this from the inside of the bag. If you have a cylinder arm or a free arm on your machine, go ahead and do it just as I am doing here. Now that that is all done, I'm just going to make sure my stitching is even. I actually went back in and evened out some of the stitching because I noticed it was kind of wavy. Um, once that's done, go ahead and pull it your bag right side out through the opening in the bottom of the lining. You'll see it'll come through nice and easy here. It's a big enough opening, especially once you get that bottom out first, then it comes out pretty easy. before tucking your lining back in. Kind of go around where the zipper tape is and make sure that everything was caught. Oh, first I'm going to press out all of my corners again. Make sure everything was caught all along that zipper. Make sure it looks nice and straight. Mine does. And if it looks good, then go ahead and stuff your lining into the inside of the bag once you poke out the bottom corners of your lining piece. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to top stitch with an eighth of an inch around the zipper. Now, I'm not going to clip this in place because that's hard to do with a zipper being there. So I'm just going to be very aware as I top stitch this where my lining is and kind of press it in place as I go section by section. So go ahead and top stitch all the way around with an eighth of an inch seam allowance.
once that top stitching is done, we wanna close up the bottom of the bag. So what we're gonna do is open up that zipper pocket, pull out that lining that has the opening in the bottom, and then pull the opening, go through there and pull out your lining bottom, the opening in the lining of the bottom of the bag through that zipper pocket, match up that opening's raw edges. Now I like to do it this way because this way we do not end up having that ridge at the bottom of the bag, um, which gives it a nice seamless look. And then you're gonna go ahead and sew that opening closed with a three quarters of an inch seam allowance. Kind of going from where your stitching start started and stopped from when we made the opening in the bottom of the bag to begin with. Once that is done, go ahead and stuff that back in through that zipper pocket. Make sure you caught everything and you have no holes. Mine looks good. And then go ahead, make sure your raw edges are folded under of your interior zipper pocket and then top stitch that closed. Once you're done that, go ahead and push that lining back into that zipper pocket. Double check everything looks good on the bottom, mine does. Now when you put your zipper pull on, match up that one inch line that we drew on the back of the zipper. It'll guarantee that you have a nice and straight zipper pull put on there. Admire your work. My zipper has a slight wave in one area, but nothing too major. I'm happy with it. I'm gonna trim up my zipper tail a little bit, put on my zipper end, as well as a, put on my straps. So this is everything done. There are my backpack straps and my crossbody strap working as one. I have my flap zipper pocket, my front magnetic zipper pocket, my luggage sleeve, another zipper pocket, and then of course my client requested a laptop slip pocket which I put in for her and made the lining just as she wants. And then we're done. All right, that's it, that's all. What did you guys think of that? Um, again, I didn't modify it too much. I just added in a few extra things and took some things out um, just to make it so it's less cumbersome of having to keep track of uh, two extra straps. Anyways, if you did like this tutorial, please do give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you would like to support my channel further, you can definitely buy me a coffee. That link is down below in the description. And if uh, you're interested in taking any of my sew along classes on the membership side, how to join is down in the description as well. Anyways, until the next one, bye guys.